Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Carolina Conversation. I'm your host, Shimon Williams, and we have a dandy here today. Uh, we have a Naismith Hall of Famer, but more importantly, he's a three-time national champion at the University of North Carolina. We have none other than our head coach, Roy Williams. Thank you, Shimon. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm getting pretty good at that, you Coach. Are, you're pretty good at well, that. boy. <laughs> Getting all right with that. Um, but how are you doing, and, and how are you doing through this pandemic? You know, Shimon, I'm doing well. It's a difficult time. It's a difficult time in our country with the uh, political process going on. And I don't agree with what's happening there right now. It's been a, yes, a tough time in our country for the, the issues that we face more so this spring and summer than I can ever remember. Uh, the racial inequality, the things that have happened in our country have just been – tough and in my little world you know fighting and uh, every day trying to do everything you can to fight COVID-19 and seeing what's happening in a number of cases a number of deaths so this is uh I'm I'm blessed I really am I'm 70 years old but this is the most difficult time I've ever seen for our country uh but I'm lucky as yes, I can be I get to go in that gym every day and work with some great, great guys. Yeah. Well, listening to you, listening to you and knowing the, the guy that we both love and care dearly about, Coach Smith, you begin to understand, as we do, uh, how important you are, not only to just the, the Carolina basketball, but what we stand for as people. Well, you know, it's, it, it really is something. Coach Smith was the best teacher I've ever been around, and I've been so blessed. But uh, I, I would just feel so sorry for him right now if he were alive and and having to see what our country's going through as well. But you know what it is, Shimon? It's a country of people. It's about people. And that's who yes, we sir. should be concerned about. Right. And that's, that's what it is. And I think that uh, we've lost part of that process with uh, what's going on in our political world. Yes, sir. Well, um, the one thing that we're blessed, uh, we come from that environment. And, uh, you know, the one thing that we've all become accustomed to, especially being under Coach Smith, is that we all come from different walks of life and we may have some disagreements in how how we've done things in the past or the way that we see things. But we always came together as a family and we did things together, uh, which was what was best for everyone, not just individuality. And uh, the more people that you know we've spoken to uh, on this podcast, people have gotten to understand what Carolina basketball really means and, and, and what Coach Smith built in all of us as his, uh, as his pupils. When we did the Black Lives Matter video, what yeah. I wanted it to be is not me talking all the time, but I wanted it to be our players. So then we had 500 players I could have chosen. So I decided I wanted it to be a player from every team that won the national championship, even all the way back to Lenny Rosebluth and Tommy Kearns in 57. And they were ecstatic to be involved. So it, it's gone through – uh, three or four or five coaches. It's gone through since 1957. Uh, you know, so we're talking 63 years that we've had things that uh, nobody else can say they've had it for that long. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Well, we, we can go back in, in a, a period of time. Uh, what actually made you go to the University of North Carolina, Coach? <laughs> you know, Shimon is crazy. I came here because my high school coach – Thought it was the best place for me. Okay. Uh, I was I did pretty well academically and had some I, – I could have gone just about anywhere at that time. But uh, uh, he thought it would be good because he – I made decision after my ninth grade year in high school that I wanted to be a basketball nice. coach. And it was because of the influence of my high school coach. And believe it or not, my high school coach played for Coach Smith on the freshman gotcha. team. and But he was enjoying college so much he had to drop out after – I had to stop playing basketball after the first semester. But Coach Smith, he just thought Coach Smith was the best, and he thought it would be a good influence on me. And he knew I'd have a chance to play on the freshman team and that kind of thing. But it really was. It was my high school coach's influence, and uh, uh, he knew that I wanted to be a basketball coach. And so it was Dean Smith reached out uh, uh, without any even knowing it to uh, be important to me at that point in my life. Yes, sir. Well – um, many may not know, but you did a, you know, you did a, you did a lot of uh, sacrificing to have an opportunity to, to eventually become a, a coach at the University of North Carolina mm -hmm. under Coach Smith. And uh, you know, it's been noted that you, you know, you delivered papers and you sold the the calendars and all those types of things uh, just to make ends meet while trying to have an opportunity to, uh, you know, to to be in that 
environment and to learn and, and to be regarded as one of Coach Smith's assistants. Uh, the question that I want to ask for you is, after you had an opportunity to become an assistant, what was one of the most memorable things that you learned uh, from Coach Smith being an assistant coach? Gosh, Shimon, that's, that's, that's a great question. And I always think a great question was two things. One, okay. total, total preparation. Don't let you be surprised anything that goes on on the court. Thing. If you have a timeout, that's good. If you don't have a timeout, that everybody knows. And then off the court to try to remember that it's about the players. And those are the two things that always stuck out, the total preparation on the court, but then caring and being concerned about the players and uh, always being there to either be a listener, to give advice, to give help, or as many times that I think Coach is the best there ever was on the court, and he was far better off the court than he was on the court. No question. No question. No question. He was, uh, you know, everybody, everybody that we've had on here has spoken highly of Coach Smith, uh, um, which we all do, but we all, you know, speak highly of you, you as well as Coach Brown as well. You know, you guys are our pillars mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, coaching in our family. And uh, a lot of guys, you know, want to emulate you and follow in your footsteps. And so, um, you know, being in that environment, then having an opportunity to leave the University of North Carolina to go to Kansas. How was that decision process of leaving home uh, mm -hmm. where you have learned and grew uh, to, to go on and take on one of the story programs in the country? You know, it was crazy because I didn't really care that much about interviewing for jobs and going to the convention at the Final Four and talking about who's getting fired or who's retiring. I, I never had any interest in that. If right. I had another 30 years as coach assistant, I would have been very happy. Right. Me and I one night, and he said, no, you need to think about being a coach. And I said, coach, I'm happy where I am and the whole bit. And he said, no, you need to be a head coach. And so I thought a little bit, but I never still, uh, I think I interviewed for like four jobs in 10 years. Uh, I was offered the George Mason job. And, uh, uh, they were coming down to get me to sign the contract. And I just, for 48 hours, I was just so disturbed about it. I couldn't sleep. And, and I called them and said, don't come, because it just didn't feel right. And I'll never forget, I called Coach Smith on that Saturday morning, told him that I, I told the people not to come. And he said, how do you feel? And I said, relieved. Because Coach, it just didn't feel right. He said, you're the best, you're patient, but you just wait. The right job is going to come along for you, and it's going to be in the face and have your name all over it. And two and a half months later, I was the head coach at Kansas. And that one did uh, – it was Coach Smith and Carp and the influence that they had. And so it was the kind of thing that I wanted to go to a play. I loved basketball. They had fun basketball. And Coach Smith, by Kansas being his school – had so much in us, and, and he told me that that was the right job for me. So I said, okay. And, uh, and it worked out great. We had a lot of fun, big-time teams for 15 years, and great kids that I still love to this day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You did a phenomenal job out there for sure, and uh, you coached a lot of great players and and, and did a, and made a staple out there at, at Kansas. And so after actually, you know, putting that program – not saying – you know, making that program your own because you were mm -hmm. associated with the University of Kansas and uh, you were stored for sure. And uh, once an opportunity came for you to come back to the University of North Carolina, what was that decision process like? Well, you know, Shimon, I had, and I had promised Nick Collison that I was going to be there his entire career. And I never could figure out how to talk to him and tell him that I wasn't going to do that. And so it never did feel like the right thing. So in 2000, I said no, and it uh, it was a hard thing. It upset people. It upset my, me, my family, everything. But it just didn't feel like it was right. And then I was. It was unbelievable that uh, three years later, uh, Dick Bedore was not offended by this first decision. Uh, he was hurt and that kind of thing. But he came back and asked me again. And that time, it was right. Nick Collison was a senior, and, and he wasn't going to be there. And Coach Smith told me one thing differently than he did the first time. 
he, he told me, he said, the first time we wanted you, and he said, now we want you and we need you. And we had changed athletic directors at Kansas, and it was not the same scenario for me. And uh, so it was uh, my wife and children thought I would come back the first time, and I didn't. And in 2003, they didn't think I would come back, but I did, and it was the right thing to do. And then the influence of Coach Smith uh, saying that we wanted you the last time, but now we need you, that was really important. And then the other thing, like I said, is just that my situation at Kansas had changed so much. My sister was back here and she was not in good health. Uh, my father was back here and we had never lived together since I was 10 years old, but he was still my father and he was not in good health. And my father died after being here a little over a year. And then my sister died three years later and, and really was tough on her. So they, the, as you stated right there, coming back home, uh, that was part of the decision too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you know, I, I, I knew, I knew uh, how important the institution was for you because I, I played with, with Scott and your son. Yeah. And we yeah. some great teams together as well. And so, um, you know, having the pressure of coming back here to the University of North Carolina, um, you know, how was it to win your first national championship in 2005? Even when you start asking questions, I start grinning. <laughs> 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 you know, in, in 2003, in the spring, we came back and had the first meeting with the kids and went through the summer. And so before practice started my first year, I had told them that if you do what I tell you to do to the best of your ability, we'll make the tournament my first year because it had been right. nobody on that squad had ever played in the NCAA tournament because they had missed two years in a row. And I said, I'll get you some help. And next year, we'll have a chance to win the whole blessed thing. Right. And uh, so that first year we made some strides and we got Marvin Williams and Quentin Thomas and Marvin was a big help. And every one of our players were shot. And then Raymond and Sean May particularly got so much better. And uh, I'll never forget uh, calling the, the timeout, which surprises people anytime I call any timeout. Uh, <laughs> but I called a timeout really, really late in the game and a 30 second timeout. And I told him, you finish this game. Team, and you'll be national champion that some people remember for the rest of your life. And uh, and then to have uh, Coach Smith and, and Michael Jordan come in the locker room after the game, and I told them with Coach Smith and Michael, yes, North Carolina basketball is built for Michael Jordan, Dean Smith, but for the rest of your life, North Carolina basketball is also going to be Sean May and Raymond and went down that. So it was uh, – in my professional career, that was the greatest, greatest moment having Coach and Michael in the locker room with us that night. Really? That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I, I you know, the one thing that I, I really like about that 2005 team uh, was um, because I was there in Chapel Hill. Um, mm -hmm. and I had been there since I graduated in 98 and uh, being with those guys every summer and 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 seeing some of the, the seniors that were on that team who were on the team that like was the first team to not make the tournament in so many years um, to see those guys just evolve from the lowest point that they probably thought that they were filling in their lives when they didn't make the NCAA tournament and being ridiculed for that to evolve in years later to be a national champions. Uh, you know, that's the one thing that I, I really hold in high regard um, you know, I, I I do love that you won a national championship for sure, but I, I like how you brought everything full circle for those guys who had endured yeah. uh, all the things that they had uh, were not making that NCAA tournament. You know, you think about Jackie Manuel and Jawad Williams, Melvin Scott, three guys mm -hmm. had been on the eight and twenty team, and they'd been on the, yes. in the next year and never great moment in my life is that you know because you're always hugging each other after the game before they you know get you on the stage and Jawad and Melvin and Jackie were there the three of them hugging and I said if you don't mind I'd like to be involved in this hug too and it was, uh, <laughs> and they opened their arm it was, a, it was a sweet moment because as you said they had really had some troubled times and now their senior year they were going to leave on top and uh, yes. uh, those three guys are still extremely important to us today. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Well, not winning only in 2005, you were able to evolve and get some great players to come into the University of North Carolina and 
and there you were again, uh, there to win the second national championship with 2009. If I'm not mistaken, 2009. So yeah, how was that winning the second national mm -hmm. champion and then tying Coach Smith? Now, I know how selfless we are as individuals because we're part of the Carolina family, but how did that feel winning your second national championship in, in, in versus North Carolina? You know, it was crazy because Tyler Hansbrough, for example, was in the stands in St. Louis in 05 because he's from Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Right. And he, his dad was able to get some tickets, and he had already uh, signed with us and committed to come the following year. And that was big in his entire career because he could have left college after his freshman and sophomore junior year. He said, no, I came here to win a national championship. And so right. he stayed, and luckily we did win it in 09, his senior year. But that was, uh, that was special, too, and that was the first uh, Final Four that we were in that Coach Smith did not get to come to because he was – that's when he started the declining health. And I remember up on the stage I uh, mentioned Coach Smith and told him I hope he enjoyed that game. But, uh, you no, know, those kids, again, we had a terrible heartbreak in 2008 because I thought that entire year we were the best team and we lost in the semifinals right. to Kansas and played very poorly. And when we went back to uh, right. the Final Four there in Detroit, I remember walking into the locker room uh, the night before the semifinals. Remember how we felt last year when we didn't play and talking about that we didn't play our best game. And so we played very well in the semifinals. And then in the finals, we were really good. And the crazy thing is that was a hard year in some aspects because, <clears throat> excuse me, we were picked number one preseason at that time, the only unanimous number one choice ever by the Associated Press. And we had some problems, some injuries, and the whole bit. We lost first two conference games, uh, one at home and one at Wake Forest. And I told them after the, in the locker room after that Wake Forest game, guys, we're going to be all right. Let's just keep right. plugging every day. And at the end of the year, we'll have a chance. And, and we were so right. good down the stretch. And I had a little over a minute to play in – you know, we're ahead 20 or whatever it was, and especially having such a difficult time the year before and losing in the Final Four. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, th that was a great team. And Tyler Hansberry, he was a, you know, he was a low. What I really liked about that team, and especially with Tyler being the leader, he was a worker, you know. And yeah. for, for me, I was always in the gym, but then when I would go to the gym, even in my point of career when I was professional, there he was always in the gym, so – <laughs> it was good to, to see somebody that, you know, I could identify with, with work ethic. Um, but more importantly, he being appreciated for his work ethic mm -hmm. and, uh, and performing at a high level. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was great. And so, you know, there it is. You have two national championships and you're tied with Coach Smith. And then here we go, 2017. <laughs> you win your third national championship. Mm -hmm. Now, what – now? Winning the third national championship at the University of North Carolina, what kept you from getting a, a 63 Lincoln with suicide doors painted uh, Carolina blue? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shabbat, that's better. You know, it was strange, almost very similar to the 09 team because in 16, yeah. we lost the national championship on the last second shot against Villanova. And I really right. felt like we'd come from 10 down in the last four minutes, and if we could – and Marcus Page made, it, in my opinion, the most difficult big shot I've ever seen anybody make to tie the game up, and then we lost on the last second shot. But uh, – so that team, without Marcus and Bryce, uh, all those guys were back. And now Marcus right. and Bryce were a huge part of our team. Uh, right. But uh, those guys made their mind up that every day we were going to try to get better. And I told them the first day of practice, I uh, looked around the circle and I said – Right now, I don't see Marcus and I don't see Bryce, but we're this bunch. You're good enough to win the whole thing, but instead of being there on Monday night, let's be the last team standing. And at the basketball banquet, they played that uh, opening statement, and I'd forgotten about it. Uh, but now, right, these times, you know, they mic me during practice sometimes and everything, but that was just a team that was not the, the, the best team all year, but on big game days, we could really play. That was a team, really a true team, yeah. that collectively they were really good players, but together they were a really good team. 
Yes, sir. And yeah. I'll tell you something else too. I remember they asked me about on the stage, uh, asked me about the third national championship and passing coach Smith. And I said, no, it's, uh, I never think in those terms. And I even got a little emotional up on the stage that night because I don't ever think in those terms. I just think of, you know, Justin Jackson and, and getting their national. It was wonderful, but no, I never got, I didn't get any souped up hot rod or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the suicide doors would be great to see you in the back. Uh, because you do have three national championships, you know, have a little driver or something like that. It would have, it would have been nice. You, you deserve it for sure. You deserve it. You deserve it. Wow, and so, I appreciate, it. I appreciate it. One question I would like to ask, because I always like to go back down memory lane, and we've done that, uh, but it would be unfair to our our fans and family. Uh, what's your thought about this 2020 team that you have? Give us a little insight to this team. You know, Shimon, we had a really difficult year last year in yes, 20 and in the season. And it's just we had more guys hurt uh, than I've ever had. Most games missed by a scholarship player at North Carolina have been like 48, and we missed 98. Yes, uh, sir. I didn't do as good a job as I needed to do. The players didn't respond to what we were trying to do as well as they needed to do. And it was horrible. It was difficult all the way around. Uh, Garrison had a big-time mm -hmm. year last year. And – I'm looking for big time things from him. The influence uh, of the freshman class, it's really a really good freshman class. And they've added that youthful exuberance. It's a team that I've enjoyed so much through the first two practices. And we're looking forward to hopefully doing some great things, but we're going to mess it up. There's going to be times we're going to look bad. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to, the team's going to get better and better and better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'm not going to take too much more of your time up. Um, I will say this in closing. Well, ask one question in closing, then make my statement. When Roy okay. Williams decides to not coach anymore, uh, what would you like your legacy to be at the University of North Carolina on and off the court? Uh, that every day, everything I do, I really try to think about the implication and one thing has driven me and I know this sounds childish for a 70 year old guy but I always wanted to uh, do the things that would make coach Smith proud of me and I wanted every kid to understand that it wasn't just about number of points or assists that I cared about them and cared about them as a person as a human being and oh yeah we had a lot of fun in a lot of games but uh, Make Coach Smith proud. Have the players know that I love them. And, oh, yeah, we, right. we had some fun winning games, too. No question. No question. Well, I'm going to say this in closing, Coach, because I know you have a lot more to do. and You got to go get those guys ready. But I will say this. I know because of your selflessness and who you are as a person, uh, you never looked at winning more national championships than Coach Smith as a, as a, as a feat. That's not what you wanted as a person. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this in, 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 being, in being as candid as I possibly can be, uh, we're most definitely appreciative of who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. We're most definitely appreciative of what you've done for the program. And I will say this, Coach Smith is extremely happy that you have won three national championships because mm -hmm. nobody has to talk about him winning two anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, he was, he was probably – Please win it. Please win it. So they don't <laughs> talk right. about it anymore. So, <laughs> that's right. That's so right. Man, I, I want you to most definitely uh, bask in the ambience, man, and, and know that we love you. We support you. And, uh, you know, we're, we're family. You know, we're yep. family. And the great thing about it is we've always been able to be honest with one another because we're family. And, uh, yep. and that's, that's, that's what it takes to, to grow. And uh, you've, you've taken our university and our program to a whole different level. And we we're very appreciative and we're very thankful that we have you as our leader. And, um, and so uh, with that in closing, man. Thank you. And I yes, love sir. you to death. Yes, and I remember yes, Scott talking about you as a teammate. And uh, uh, we are. We are North Carolina basketball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you, you have a great day. Tell everybody I said hello. Please tell Miss Wanda I said hello. Tell those guys I'll be up there. Uh, maybe I don't know what the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus testing is like, 
But if I have to put on my whole hazmat suit <laughs> to come in and watch a few practices, you're ready to go. I'm ordering. <laughs> All right, man. You take care. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.